let's talk about theories of emotion. A working definition of emotion is an increase or decrease in physiological activity which is accompanied by feelings that are characteristic of happiness, sadness, anger, fear, surprise, disgust, and maybe others. Some have defined emotion as any mental experience that involves pleasure or displeasure. And in terms of pleasure, you have the positive affect of happiness or surprise, and in displeasure, the negative affect of sadness, anger, fear, and disgust. There are at least four components of emotion. First, the autonomic response, such as increased heart rate, and these are involving the hypothalamus and associated brain structures. You have the subjective feelings, such as fear, and this would involve specific brain structures such as the amygdala and parts of the frontal lobes. You have the cognitions, what you're thinking about the experience. This is going to involve the cerebral cortex. And you have behavior, which might involve running away. And this involves the, the body, the movement, and the muscles, and the motor cortex. The modern approach to emotion began with Charles Darwin, who was the first to claim that emotions are universal, shared across all people on the planet, and also that the emotions in humans have a shared history with the emotional responses to animals. Likely we used emotions to respond to our uh, survival needs. When you think about our ability to recognize facial expressions, Charles Darwin was the first to also suggest that these were innate. They were in place at the time of birth. In the 1970s, Paul Ekman and colleagues began to test Darwin's claims about the universality of human emotion, in particular, the ability of humans to recognize facial expressions. Darwin predicted that they would be universal. Paul Ekman actually started out thinking his study would prove Darwin wrong, and in fact, he ended up proving Darwin correct. He tested the ability of humans around the globe to recognize basic facial expressions of emotion. And he found that there were six basic uh, emotions that were universal. These are anger, disgust, fear, happiness, sadness, and surprise. And he suggested that there may be a seventh, which is contempt. So here's a test for you. Can you pick out the face for each of these emotions? Fear, anger, disgust, sadness, happiness, surprise. There are three classic theories that attempt to explain how it is that we become aware of a particular emotional experience. These are the James Lang theory, the Cannon Bard theory, and the Schachter Singer theory. The James Lang theory suggests that it's physiology first. Some event happens and your body responds. Your heart races, you perspire, your muscles tense up, your breathing increases, and then secondly, you become consciously aware of a particular emotional state, such as, I'm afraid. The theory does a pretty good job explaining some kinds of experiences where there's a perturbation of the body, and then that leads to a fear response, like being on a roller coaster, or there's turbulence on your airplane, or you are bungee jumping. A serious problem for the theory is that you could have the same physiological reactions that lead to different emotional awarenesses. So your heart is racing and you're sweating and your muscles are tense, but is it because you saw a bear or is it because you're late for class? The model doesn't do a good job of explaining how you end up with different emotional experiences that stem from very similar physiological states. Another problem for the model is that it says that all emotional experiences stem from the first, the physiological state. But what about people who have extensive paralysis in their bodies? They have limited uh, physiological states. Does that mean that they cannot experience emotions? Research has actually looked at this question. When you look at the location 
of a person's spinal cord damage and how much paralysis they have, it does show that the intensity of the emotional experience is decreased the greater that the amount of paralysis is involved. So someone who has paralysis in all four limbs or quadriplegia would experience emotions less intensely than someone who has just paralysis in the lower limbs or paraplegia. Our second theory of emotion is the cannon Bard theory, and it does improve upon the weaknesses of the James Lang theory. Here it is specified that you have an event like seeing a snake, and you've got two things happening simultaneously. You've got the body responding, heart racing, perspiration, increased breathing, muscle tension, and at the same time, you have a conscious awareness of what that emotion is, fear. So the model does better than the James Lang theory. It accounts for why different emotional states might correspond to the same physical states, and it also explains the data from the studies of people with paralysis. But some critics have said that it may overemphasize the role of the thalamus in emotion. The Schachter-Singer theory, the last of the three classical theories that we'll cover, does a little bit better, is a little bit better received than the canon bar theory. It states that physiological arousal determines the intensity of the emotion, but not which emotion is experienced. So one does not experience the emotion until the emotion is a consciously label that would be a cognitive process. So one must first identify a reason for a physical state, such as, oh, there's a snake, before one then consciously can label that as an emotion, fear. So the theory can explain how similar physiological states can be interpreted differently as different emotions, depending on the situation, because it's the cognitive process that labels the emotion is where you get the difference. A classic study from the 70s illustrates how in everyday life we may attribute our physical arousal, the states of our body, to different emotions or different uh, cognitive uh, processes. This study was called the Suspension Bridge Study by Dutton and Aaron. They had male participants walk across one of two types of bridges. One a suspension bridge, which is kind of scary. There's no solid footing underneath of you. It wobbles back and forth. Or a bridge that was your ordinary stationary bridge, which would not be scary. And at the end of the bridge, uh, you were met by a, a nice a research assistant, a young woman. So all the men in the study ended the study at the end of the bridge meeting a young woman. Half of them, when they reached the young woman, had this racing heart, tense muscles, perspiration from being on the scary suspension bridge. And half of them uh, were on the regular bridge and were just fine. And the research assistant offered her phone number uh, as uh, one would do to say, if you have questions about the study, please call. When the researchers compared the number of callbacks that the participants made to the lovely research assistant, they found that more men who had walked across the suspension bridge had called the research assistant than men who walked across the regular bridge. And it was speculated that it was perhaps because the men on the suspension bridge felt this increased arousal from the bridge experience, but when they met the research assistant, maybe misattributed the arousal to being something of romantic interest. It seems as, as a dated experiment, something that we wouldn't do today. Um, if you're thinking this, I agree. But the theory makes the right prediction about the fact that our physiological states could be interpreted as different emotions depending on the situation. And if you are wondering whether going on a first date with somebody to a roller coaster park or to a scary movie would actually work in your favor because of this theory, you are correct. If you go to the scary movie and there's all this tension that creates physiological arousal in your body, then it's possible that this could be interpreted by your date as higher levels of romantic interest. A very recent theory of emotion has been proposed by Lisa Feldman Barrett 
and it's called The Theory of Constructed Emotion. There's a TED Talk link in Canvas for you to watch. It is a very compelling theory that rejects the notion that we have innate emotional categories that are universal across all people. Check it out and see what you think. That's all for now.